I'll discuss the Eagle Nebula, the Pillars of Creation. This feature is also known as M16, and on this sky map, uh, down here is Sagittarius. You may recognize the teapot asterism. And we're looking here towards the center of the Milky Way galaxy, so they're very rich in gas clouds and nebula of one sort and another. Um, but sometime, if you do have uh, in the summertime and uh, a view of the southern sky and a dark sky, you could use binoculars and, uh, and look for these various features. But uh, in the constellation of Serpents, you'd find M16, but a little more notable landmarks in the sky for Sagittarius in the teapot. Then from the heavens-above.com site, heavens-above.com, again, a view of the sky here with Sagittarius. So it's uh, from my location in Nebraska. It's fairly low in the southern horizon. Uh, perhaps you have a better view if you're more southerly latitude uh, than I am. Uh, but this is September 1st, and so a few months before September 1st, a few months possibly after September 1st, um, before September 1st, more in the southeast sky, after September 1st, in the southwest sky, you could uh, look for this, this feature. But let's get to some photographs of uh, the Eagle Nebula, M16, and after that we'll talk about the Pillars of Creation. So this is in 1973, uh, a telescope with a four meter diameter at Kitt Peak in Arizona. Uh, this overall region here, the uh, Eagle Nebula, is an H2 region, called an H2 region. Uh, the hydrogen in here is ionized and then recombines uh, with the proton electron and gives off light. Uh, but there are hot young stars in here that are energizing this nebula hotter than the sun, uh, larger than the sun, and they are uh, giving the nebula the ability to glow, to give off light, and we see that. And then there are dust lanes. You can see where the darker stretches in here where the dust is thicker and blocking the uh, background light from reaching us. So this feature is about 6,500 light years away. Uh, the center of the Milky Way galaxy is about 26,000 light years away from the sun. So it, it's closer to us than the center of the galaxy. Uh, across the nebula, it's about 20 light years. So this is a large feature in the sky. Uh, let's go on. Now we're seeing a view of the Eagle Nebula uh, with another telescope at Kitt Peak and with a better camera. Uh, not photography, but a CCD camera, and with filters to record uh, light from different regions and different gases creating the light. So color-coded on this, it's false coloring, but green would be the hydrogen H-alpha light. That's really red light, but they chose to use uh, green. Uh, but H-alpha light, as the electron combines with the proton, one common... Uh, wavelength of light that's given off is called H-alpha. Um, the blue coloring shows where there's oxygen that's been doubly ionized, um, and then red is from sulfur that's been singly ionized. So just to give you some, some feeling as to different structures in here, and uh, nice color photograph, but it is false color. It's not what you'd see with your eye. Now, the Eagle Nebula with the um, pillars of creation identified with this arrow, and then there's some other features I'm not going to talk about. I'm going to focus in on these so-called pillars of creation, uh, but showing you where they're located in the, uh, the nebula. And another view here with the, uh, the pillars down in here. Um, this again is a Earth-based telescope, 2.2 meters across in Chile. Um, and again, the darker regions here where we have dust uh, blocking the more distant light from reaching us. Now to the Hubble telescope. And this was a fairly famous uh, photograph in 1995 it was taken, showing what we came to be called the pillars of creation. Uh, these are dust and gas pillars that are more dense 
dust and gas than the regions in between them. And there are stars being born inside this, uh, this higher density dust. Towards the top, you can't see it in this photograph, but there are some, again, some hot massive stars that are sending uh, out an abundance of ultraviolet light. And that ultraviolet light has eroded the uh, gas and dust in between, call it quote unquote eroding, it's ionizing it and uh, uh, dispersing it. But where the dust is denser, it shields the pillar uh, below it, somewhat like sandstone uh, structures are uh, created in uh, various various countries. It's not the same project, not the same process. There are winds on Earth that accomplish that, but uh, ultraviolet light is eating away at this dust and gas. That was 1995. Um, some nodules that are identified and stars forming. Um, inside those densest clumps. But now in 2015, the Hubble telescope was serviced several times while it was in orbit with better equipment being installed each time. So here's the same uh, view, but now with better technology for recording the light, a better CCD camera. And again, we can see these denser clumps uh, where stars are forming, these nodules at uh, various locations in here and we're about to get a better view as well uh, but seeing more details and more of the fascinating structure in this nebula <coughs> excuse me now a comparison here with uh, with Hubble with the visible light and then infrared light and I'd ask you to uh, tell me what do you see is different in the two photographs uh, you see a lot more stars Infrared light can penetrate through dust and the gas to reveal more distant stars back behind. So in the visible light where this dust blocks the more distant stars, with the infrared camera that light is coming on through and being recorded. And then some of these stars are inside the pillars um, and in the process of, of being born. So like one right there. And, um, various, I don't know exactly which of these are in the pillar and which are not, but uh, this infrared view is able to peer through gas and dust. It's very powerful. Um, so the James Webb Telescope that hopefully will be in orbit in a couple of years and in operation operates more in the infrared than the Hubble Telescope and will uh, again greatly improve improve astronomers ability to probe areas of the universe inside dust clouds. Uh, this is the same view that was on the right, but again, I um, wanted to just expand that, make it a bigger photograph. The, the very densest dust, the infrared can't get through, so still have some of that here, but able to see more details and pick up more stars with this infrared view. So I hope you uh, keep looking at astronomy photographs and, uh, and come back to this uh, YouTube channel for, for that. I'll be posting um, links to my YouTube videos um, for these new ones I'm doing of astronomy images. Uh, that'll be on astronomy.gpclements.com and then at physics.gpclements.com there's a, uh, for both of these sites, there's a full year of short lectures on the topic. For the physics site, there's also quite a few example problems worked out. Um, and at this site, you can you know, see the name of the video. They're kind of organized by uh, common content, how long it is in minutes, and a description of the video. And appreciate it if you go ahead and watch a video. And if you like this uh, channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. That would be helpful. So I hope that you do. Uh, Keep looking at uh, at the sky. Try to find the Eagle Nebula with binoculars and the the rich uh, gas clouds uh, area that's by the center of our galaxy in the Sagittarius constellation. And then keep looking for Hubble photographs. They're great.